Hello everyone and welcome to the 2014 Core 77 Design Awards. I'm Sarah Spear and I'm the Program Manager here in New York City. We're excited to bring you the Equipment Category winners and honorees. Judging took place in Portland, Oregon this year. So I'm going to go ahead and pass it over to the team now and they're going to tell you all of their selections. Well, hello everybody. Uh, I'm Sora Basugi and we are coming to you from the city of Portland, Oregon. That's where my, uh, we are. We did all the judging for the equipment category for the Core 77. And with me, I have all my uh, colleagues uh, who helped me tremendously who helped this thing, this competition, as far as you know, judging all the entries. And they put a lot of time into that. And uh, I am so honored to have them as part of my uh, judging. Uh, panel and I'm going to have them introduce themselves uh, to you themselves. <laughs> I'm Steve Wittenbrock, uh, founder of SOMA in Portland. Uh, we're a strategic product design development firm. I'm Kirsten Minchinger. I'm the director of the product design program at the University of Oregon. I'm Jamie Cobbett. I'm director of design for digital sport at Nike. So you can see that we have a very high caliber of people who really took a lot of time to put uh, to look at these entries and we took a lot of uh, time during our uh, by, the, by you know each each uh, judge took time on their own to look at each uh, all these categories all these entries and then we came together for about half a day to look at our selected entries and actually debate and you know com uh, converse about why something uh, was worthy of uh, an award or uh, notable or, uh, or runners up. So during the next 10-15 uh, minutes we'll talk about each one of these uh, selected uh, entries and talk about why we picked one over others. Um, so first we're going to talk about some of the um, trends that we saw during this uh, judging. Um, and for, for me, actually, it was really interesting because I, one of the things I noticed was that there was no uh, entry from Asia, which is very, because we, uh, Asians are very strong in design these days, and there was not one, even one, but uh, we had a lot of entries from Europe, US, and a few other countries like Brazil and uh, India. That was one of the big things that I, we saw. But I'm gonna, uh, in you know, um, ask our uh, my co-judges about some of the, uh, the trends that they saw. Steve, <laughs> you start with that? Uh, I think one of the the, the uh, one of the issues that surprised us was the fact that the student competition or the student entries were um, very clever and quite thorough compared to the professionals, um, and that surprised us. We were expecting just the reverse, and that was not the case. They really celebrated the narrative. They really did a good job of communicating the project from beginning to end, the process they went through, the consumer, uh, and the solution was just so well described, whereas the, the, the professionals are just kind of like, there it is. And even the imagery, some of the imagery, are like the imagery doesn't really help us. The actual entry didn't necessarily describe completely what the product was and what it did, whereas the students went to the nth degree to really promote their ideas and their solutions, which goes a long way in a competition to really helping us understand what, what your ideas are so we can judge the competition much better. And yeah, most of the debate was over the student entrance rather than the professionals. The professionals was like, these ones win, these ones are runners up, these ones are notables, and the rest, you know, fall below that line, whereas there was a lot of discussion, right, on the student stuff. So that was that was very interesting. What do you think, uh, Kirsten, as, I mean, you come from both professional background and actually now the dean of uh, school, uh, product design school at University of Oregon. So you've seen, you're seeing a lot of students and now you saw some of the work they're doing internationally. What do you yeah, think? Yeah, way to go students. <laughs> <laughs> um, and one of, the, one of the things that we also talked a lot about a lot was that we really hope that you students keep that, that you maintain that storytelling ability and bring that into the profession, don't lose it, um, just to fit into whatever profession you're going into. Yeah. And the, you know, the simplicity of some of this work was really great. Uh, and I, you know, sometimes I think about the students. Sure, there is not much limitation because it's more conceptual. But uh, uh, you know, for 
when I look at professionals, I wish that we could break, you know, keep that mentality of, of design as we were students or the, these students who are entering their stuff into the uh, competition and continue with that because, sure, there's, there are a lot more limitations, as I said, but uh, I think there's, that's the greatest challenge is to become more creative and push the envelope. So that was something that I wish we could see a little bit more from the professionals. I think simplicity as well, right? Simplicity won out for us. You know, it's, yeah. it's, it's easy to go to go into a solution and make it really complex. Like, I can do this, I can do this, I can do this, I can do this, I can do everything. And just throw that all at everybody. It's like, it gets confusing. We, we don't know what's going on, what the solution is. But the people that really pared it down to like, this is the simple solution that's going to have an impact and it's actually going to gonna, gonna, um, solve a situation uh, for people and, and make people's lives better. They're the ones that really stood out. Yeah. Just clean, crisp, and simple. Sure. Yeah. And, and, and the, um, yeah, very thoughtful, uh, problem solving. And uh, yeah, we respected that, reacted to it. So I'm sure that everybody wants to know who won. <laughs> Let's talk about that a little bit. Um, and by the way, we have created a cheat the Cheat, cheat board where uh, we have put all the uh, selected uh, entries up on the wall so, so we can remember. There it is. There you got a glimpse of what we are looking at. <laughs> <laughs> um, so let's talk about professional category. Uh, Steve, uh, do you want to talk about who was the winner? Yeah, I mean, uh, it, it, we selected the winner quite quickly, actually. Um, the, uh, the winner was. A Luma gear halo, and uh, we found uh, the reason. Well, the, the whole story behind the idea, um, as I mentioned earlier, thoughtful, uh, solid. It was it was very clear um, the conditions of use and and how it was to be used, and uh, it was it was fairly obvious. It was immediate consensus from all of us chairs, and it was the only thing that we came to immediate consensus on. Yeah. Um, which was, it was really remarkable. So there, there were a lot of strong entries, but this was absolutely, as Steve said, it was fast. We all knew that this was the, the winner. Yeah, super, super simple entry with like so many benefits, right? You can see this from a quarter of a mile away. So instantly, like highway safety for people working on the highway, bang, straight away, amazing solution. But then on top of that, it has certain modes that are easy to access for different working environments. Um, so like taking that icon and just going to the depth of understanding the user and what they need out of this other than just simply the safety or the visibility. Um, just a great all-round solution and a, and a really simple package. So I, I think it was, the, what I liked about that was that it was so obvious. Meaning that, okay, you've got a uh, hat that is round, <laughs> you know, and, and then you've got this basically ring that just sits on it. And that was just a beautiful, very, very clever way of actually putting a light on uh, you know, on a worker, or especially with those, uh, you know, hats. You know, usually they stick something in the, on the front or whatever, just just sat right there. It was, it's like a, you know, hand and glove, basically they're called. So it was very clever, very simple, used new technology, of course. I'm sure that we probably couldn't have done that if it wasn't for the uh, LED technology, but yeah, that's great because there the technology makes enable such a great solution. Yeah, and the aesthetics of the product too, not only does it look really good on the hat, but it looks good as its own product also if you see it true. without the hat. True, true, yes, exactly. So anyway, congratulations to the winner of Illuma Gear. Gear Halo. Uh, Kirsten, do you want to talk about the So, runners the two up? runners up, sure. Um, the first runner up is the DS4800 series barcode scanner. Uh, from a mouthful, a little bit of a mouthful. <laughs> <laughs> it's a mouthful, and that was one of the funny things about it. Actually, we, we couldn't stand the name, but we love the product. <laughs> That's right. The product is it's beautiful, it's elegant, um, it suggests a timeless design. It's very different from other barcode scanners. Um, it has a personality to it and a personal relationship to it more than the typical guns that you see as barcode scanners. We liked all of that. Uh, oh, I was going to say, the, the only thing that uh, we had reservations about was how the uh, stand was treated. Right. And it felt as though uh, it was a completely different design language than um, the product itself. Uh, yeah, I think it was not as compatible. It didn't really make the product better. It actually conflicted with the product to some extent. So 
because the product itself is very beautiful. It's so simple, so elegant. The stand, and I think we know that you probably need the stand for a reason, but the way it was resolved was not really as well as the, the barcode itself. So hence the uh, a, a run around. And I think, I think they're just, just breaking the icon. People are used to having the scanner, like a scanning gun that you scan things with. So to break away from that and come up with a new form in this space, definitely compelling. Uh, I think the biggest debate we had on this one was over the customization. Like, does it need the customization? I think we resolved that in, in, in considering like different shopping environments and the kind of consumers that would be in that shop could well appreciate that, even though from a design perspective, you know, uh, customization on, on an object like this could be considered a little bit of an overkill. Um, but we could, we could kind of see like why that was there to give you know, um, retailers the opportunity to customize it, to fit their brand and uh, express their attributes. So it kind of made sense at the end of the day. So the and the second runner up is DIYer. Um, DIYer, the first thing we all thought was that we want one. Uh, yeah. And it's, it's really lovely execution, it's very simple. The, um, the creation of the wire forming is what's really enhanced on this product, looking at the, at the top surface of the product. Um, so it's not just about the piece of equipment itself, but it's about what the equipment does. The thing I loved about this was, was really celebrating the process. So you can see the mechanism on top and you can see it bending the wire. And then the rest of the product just kind of stands for reliability. It looks like it's going to do the job that it's meant to do. And the, the thing that really, really, um, really brought this home for me was when we watched the video, that they extended beyond just simply the product and the bending of the wire to actually supplying the fixtures and fittings to help you put your pieces of wire together and hold them in yeah. place so you can weld them together. So like really understanding the whole process from beginning to end was really what, what sold this to me. Sure. So. Sure. While you're at it, do you want to uh, talk about the notables? Uh, sure, so in the notables, um, the first up is the bespoke bracing. Um, it's similar to the DIY wire in, in the way that it's designed moving into a different area. It's not necessarily a solidly on aesthetic and form, but it's more about process and how process is applied and just kind of um, realizing the full potential. We have uh, rapid prototyping, our additive prototyping, uh, additive manufacture. Um, and this really, really takes that in, in, into a space where you take full advantage of it. So you can have real custom solutions for patients, not only functionally, but also aesthetically. Um, it's interesting the way they went through the whole experience of how the, how the customer gets their, their hands, their hand, or whatever appendage they need this brace for um, scanned. And then they go through choosing their own pattern, their own aesthetic, so they can really express themselves and, and ultimately have a device that functions perfectly for them and also is a perfect expression of themselves, which at the end of the day is going to encourage them to use this brace for what it should be used for. I've had a brace in the past, which is the <laughs> incumbent solution where they, you know, they have this, uh, this material that they cut to shape and they heat it up and they kind of weld it around your hand and they get some Velcro and stick it on. And it's just kind of a kludge DIY affair where this feels like it's a much more resolved solution. So great application of process and then great design thinking out of what would normally be, you know, applied to a standard product. So that's why that one stood out for us. And then the second one, do you want to talk about that? Start with that too? Yeah, the second one uh, is, is the Revelar. Um, from, a, again, from the opposition, from the bespoke, uh, bespoke bracelet, the Revelar is just a pure form, just this pure, um, distilled down to its most simple essence form. Um, just beautifully integrated. Um, if this had a, if this had have had a stronger explanation of the, the full experience, this may have well moved up the rankings. Um, but as as it was, there wasn't much of a story there with it. So we could deduce a lot from the form. Um, but you know, that was one of, that was one of my favorites form. because it yeah. was such a clever way of combining form and function. The way that the door opens on that device and the, where the probe gets mm -hmm. stored. It was it was just beautiful uh, uh, combination of form and function and uh, elegantly done. But as you said, what how, how big is it? Who uses it? You're right. Or that where was, does it fit in what? In yeah, the where department? where does it sit? Yeah, <laughs> you know. What is its scale? Yeah. So there was no exactly. sense of yeah. Yeah. yeah, so as we are getting uh, going through this, uh, we need to kind of go through the student ones because we have only about eight minutes or so left. So um, there's so much more student stuff than everything. I know stuff. that's the fun mm -hmm. one. Five minutes. So we gotta go fast we on this one. Fast. This is the one that we took we took a long time to do it. So yeah. you want to start with the student winner? And yeah, then... I will start with the winner, and we're gonna run through this pretty Since quick. Since you pushed on that, a lot. I pushed on this one. <laughs> uh, the the winner is the ego. Um, 
the reason this stood out for me is, is the maturity of the solution and the execution. Um, very clear insight uh, on jackhammers and on what some of the challenges are for the users of those. And then the way this has been executed, I think, is just, is just beautiful and shows a lot of maturity. Um, it's a very well integrated solution. Uh, the solution is very evident. You look at the products and you just understand it. Almost like the Illumigear Halo, you look at it, you get it. It's simple and straightforward. But then as you start to spend more time with it, you start to understand there's a depth to it. There are other secondary and tertiary solutions uh, in this that, that start to come to, to the forefront when you actually run through the use case scenario of the device. And then ultimately, just the way the form's treated, the way the detail's treated, really makes this feel like it's, it's an actual solution, like it's an actual product done by a professional. So just, just the level of finish of this really, really stood out. It was mature, it was complete, it stood out. Although I, I did question the wheel uh, design of the <laughs> wheel, because I said, the wheel is a great idea, but that the chunkiness on the wheel, I was saying, it, you know, the product is very smooth and very well you know, integrated, the wheel kind of, looks like it's coming from a truck sitting on there. So that was my uh, kind of a concern. Yeah. Okay, so we must move along here. Yes. The runner-ups. <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, so the runner-up, uh, Neo Nook, Neo Natal Infant Care. Uh, quite a comprehensive story that was told. Um, we appreciated the, uh, the completeness of the solution. And, um, and, and that's the reason it was selected. It, uh, and there's yes, several here we need to talk about. Yeah. So, so it was it was a great entry. It took in it took in the, the, the child, the parent, the caregivers, all those users, and, and applied a lot of technology, a lot of insight, and a great great explanation of the process that went into actually executing that product. Do you want to say anything about that? No, that bit? covers it. Okay, it was really beautifully done. Yeah. And the, the last, the second runner up was. Uh, you want to talk about that? The, the second runner up is the Geriday ground sensitive harvester. And uh, we really liked the deep thinking involved in this. It was a very specific problem. It was a very comprehensive solution. The storage of the vehicle when it's being transported to place, the, um, the enlargement yeah, of the, the vehicle, the of articulation. It, yeah. yeah, so that when it's in place, it, it is sensitive to the ground. Um, and the various uh, use cases that were all explored and were all explained in the entry were really well done. So notables, uh, Steve. Um, the first was the uh, the warm device, and um, uh, we appreciated this. It, it, there was just significant utility to the design, and uh, um, it it also uh, seemed to have thought through the the specific problem well, and uh, we appreciated. Uh, how, how the, the device was applied uh, to the body um, in these, these situations where hypothermia uh, uh, may exist and, and uh, uh, challenge one's life. I'll take the next one. The Mars uh, 2025 Essentials are just uh, really in-depth research, great project. It took us ages to read the research on this. Probably could have edited that into a much more succinct story, um, which may be a reason why it's dropped down. But it shows that you, you can combine performance with aesthetic, like some beautiful apparel design, beautiful equipment design, but like very, very well thought out. So that's why that's in the notables. The next one, uh, next notable is the Heart Read. And this is a, um, this is a defibrillator that switches the use scenario to the defibrillator finding the situation as opposed to the person in need in the situation finding the defibrillator. And that was, a, it was really well done. It was very simple to, de to deploy. Um, and it, it looks good when it's on the wall, and it's a nice disposable. Uh, it's very intuitive, basically. That's what I like about it. It's a very intuitive uh, uh, design. You know where you know just the directions. Everything moves out, and uh, especially during a, very, a situation like that, you don't want to read. You don't want to uh, think about what you, how you have to uh, apply this thing. So it was very intuitive. I think yeah, we can go to the next one. Yeah. The, the, the moment triage system, just a great idea. Basically tags you put on people and it illuminates in color to show you how critical their situation is, green, amber, or red. You tag everybody, you know who to deal with first. Great idea, straightforward, done. Very cool. Very cool. <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously, it was, no, very, no, it was, it was a great idea. Okay, so, so the next one is a trump, a companion, elephant. Um, we like the, the thoroughness of the solution. 
the only uh, problem we had was the fact that an elephant uh, imagery was used in the solution, but um, it, it, was a, it was a complete solution, and we liked that aspect of it but um, had some reservations about the final execution. <laughs> yeah, really focused that the animal could have been abstracted a little bit more. Right. Yeah, no. But the articulation of the trump. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so, so Rob, uh, the companion. Uh, uh, this was, was, this was the high one for you. I know, companion, because I could uh, empathize with that. <laughs> you know how when you're going up and down these escalators and you go up and down the uh, you know, stairs and you have a... Um, Okay, we have some a call coming in, it looks like. <laughs> but anyway, it was a great uh, ex uh, idea, uh, resolved a lot of issues that we ha you have during travel with uh, carry-ons up and down stairs and, uh, you know, accessing it from outside. So I thought it was a beautiful, simple solution for something that a lot of us, all of us actually uh, go through. So great stuff, uh, great work for, by the students overall. Very, very novel and clever. Yeah, if I was going to sum up, I'd say uh, between the professionals and the students, I think the students win and the professionals are runners up. So, yep, well done, yes. students. Yes. <laughs> and I hope that the students can continue with that type of thinking as they enter into the professional uh, life. Very, very important. With that, uh, I think time is up and we say goodbye to all of you. Great job. Great, Great job. Yeah, thanks, thanks a lot. Yeah. It was fun. Good stuff. Thanks, guys, for picking such a great group of honorees this year. I'm sure it must have been really tough because we had so many strong entries. So a huge thank you to everyone who submitted an entry this year. We would love to see your work again next year, whether you were selected for an honor or not. Another huge thank you to the jury for taking the time to get together and picking such a great group of honorees. And finally, I'd like to extend another thank you to our presenting sponsor, Intuit, for helping to make the 2014 Core 77 Design Awards possible this year. So thanks for tuning in. Uh, we have plenty more announcements to come, so we'll see you later this week.